I'm gonna get a whole hour of, <coughs> of shots. It was gonna be a whole. Hey, hey man, welcome <laughs> back to the road back home. <laughs> so what do you think about Dunya, man? <laughs> <laughs> the camera's gonna be messed. <laughs> Can you close the door? Uh. <laughs> Yo, you ever heard uh, those people who like charge you for for air, like for premium air? They charge you like twenty dollars on Yo. that. He looks like somebody who would sell you that shit. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> like, yeah, this is a Honda, so you can use regular air, but this is a Mercedes, you need special air, and he'll charge you like $30. <laughs> you know, you know. by the way, it's free, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I don't know if you're the one who told me this. Someone I remember, but I didn't know this. Free what? The air at gas stations is free. Although they charge. Gas stations, right? Yeah, they're free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By law, you're not allowed to. I think back in the day, it used to be like a quarter or some shit. It still is. They still have it there. Oh, you but people lie. didn't know... If you know, you go inside and you ask the guy, turn the can you turn on. the air on? They just turn it on. They don't say anything. Hey, yeah. did not know that. Okay, okay. You didn't know that, so it wasn't you no, who no. told me. Okay. No, no, I definitely did not know that. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so we're back. We're back with episode two. You want to hit that, uh, hit that, the, those roll claps? Roll back. Yeah. 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 My hands are here. Yeah. <laughs> So alhamdulillah, man, this is the second episode. <clears throat> I'm happy to be here, man. This is this is fun. I can't wait to be like a little bit more like uh popping off. Smooth. Yeah. Not even pop popping off is one thing, but just being smooth, being drop drop episode after the uh, next episode after the next episode yeah. and just make it smooth like butter, you know? Just, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it doesn't feel like, you know, you know, you're learning how to drive every time you get in the car. That's tough. Like driving yeah, manual. That's, that's all I I'll, side note, I d I can't drive manual. I don't understand why people do. I It's fun. How's it fun? It's fun. In the beginning, it's annoying. But then when you become proficient at it, it's actually just enjoyable. You just enjoy it. You actually feel like you're driving a real car. I, I never understood why people say, like, if you don't know how to drive a manual, then you're not a real man or you don't know how to drive a car. You won't know until you actually start driving a manual and then you realize, like, yeah, this is actually dope. I can see why people actually get like a but why do make you fun want of people who don't know how to drive manual. Why do you want more work? You see, I don't know. I get. Uh, I guess as 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 a man, damn, <laughs> uh, we're not afraid to work. Feel I me? mean, I'm just saying, like, if I'm driving to work, I don't need to work on my way to work. <laughs> you know what I'm no, see, like, the <laughs> most annoying thing about driving a manual is the fact that you, depending on where you're driving, you rarely have the opportunity to actually be on your phone and get other stuff done. So that's true. Of course, you have your, if you're li- listening to podcasts and stuff. You got your AirPods, whatever. But yeah. trying to send a text message or even phone calls sometimes is annoying, depending on th- like the situation. Because yeah, you constantly have I've to switch out. I've seen people like tuck the tuck the phone under their neck. Oh, so that's they can the switch worst. Gears. <laughs> Yo, I've done that. Oh, that's yeah. the worst. So that Especially coming like out of first gear. That's the worst. It it just seems like extra credit work, you know. I, I, it is to a certain, again. I think to a certain extent, it's just like a stigma. Like there's something associated with being able to drive a stick. Everyone is just like, "Oh, you know how to drive stick." I didn't understand that until. So being able to drive stick, that's fine. That's like a skill to have yeah. in your back pocket. Like you never know, like when you're trying to steal a car, if it's manual, you better know. You know what I'm saying? But otherwise, like, like dude, why would I want to choose a manual for my, for my like daily? Yeah, but unless you got nothing else to do. So today's episode, what we're talking about today, I want to talk about the importance of, of being honest with ourselves. I've, <laughs> uh, I've recently uh, realized I'm uh, going to be honest. I'm a liar. Uh, you didn't need to tell me that. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that means I'm not a good liar. <laughs> um, started off small, you know, little white lies here and there. Like Why white lies? Huh? Okay. As opposed to what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, small lies that yeah. you tell, things that you don't, you wouldn't, you know, cause a collapse yeah. in in a, in a family structure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, who who left the tap running? Ah, it wasn't me. <laughs> it's a white lie. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit. You get away with that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, if it's like, a, yo, who ate this? Uh, who ate, who ate the yogurt I was saving? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. What flavor was it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, white lies. You know, small, and then they slowly got bigger, and. Um, uh, <coughs> for me, it was like uh, when I'll be out with my friends, and I'll be like, "Yo, I don't got a ride." 
rides right outside. <laughs> 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 I won't come on right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are small. I don't know if you. Uh, you, you know have, what? If you have any uh, you know old lies you've ever told. I'm I'm trying to debate whether or not I want to like embarrass myself. Like you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has protected me thus far. Yeah. Why put, why expose myself? You feel me? Oh no, we only talk about the ones that we got exposed for already. Like like cats out the bag. No, if you no, got away I, with it, you got away no, with no, it. No. The last thing I want to do is try to portray like I'm this. Um, amazing perfect human being mm -hmm. and i think just generally in life that's what everyone is trying to do they're trying to actually hide <coughs> everything that makes them a human being which is the fact that you have problems in life you have ups and downs you might lie once in a while mm -hmm. again obviously i'm not uh, best not to expose yourself but yes growing up as a kid especially in the Islamic school that i was in like i grew up in um i'll give you an example like cheating on exams Ooh. That was a norm. Yeah. A norm. And it's like, I was tr trying to, I don't know what the word is, but like trying to. Justify? Yeah. Like, how can I be praying five times a day? How can I be doing all this and preaching like Islam? And, but at the same time, I'm doing this and I'm trying to justify it. And, you know, it's so, it was a weird, like. Yeah. Situation to be. I, I would turn that side of myself off. Yeah. Like I, I would, I would make dua. To get a good grade, and then I would cheat, but I would never connect the two sides. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd ask, like I'd ask for you know um, help outside. I'd come inside, be deviant, <laughs> and then I'll go outside and ask for forgiveness again. Like I would just keep those two separate. I think we had a phrase: uh, "It's easier to uh, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission." Yeah, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. So I just you know stuff loud, just be in there like yeah. yo. Just look inside. Oh, the funny thing, I had some friends who would like, um, there was some uh, some Saudi guys that were in my math class in college. <coughs> it was calculus too. It was a tough class. Mm. And they would, they would like, we would all be cheating. Uh, and this is in the middle of Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> we all fasting. We're tired. <laughs> we trying to, we trying to get out of there. And um, they would cheat, but because they weren't speaking in English, they thought they could just speak regular level sound, like regular sound level. So they'll just turn to me <laughs> and speak like, like how I'm speaking to you. They'll be asking me for the answer. Just, it's just an Arabic. Yeah. Like we still in the exam, buddy. Like <laughs> teachers, like it was insane to me. And like, I'm like, you know, we, I did this thing where like, um, we would write all our answers on a different page. And then like, it would be like the scrap, the, 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 the mm -hmm. page that you just work out on. And then we would slip that back. That's how we, you mm -hmm. know, not trying to give out some, Secrets, but that's <laughs> pretty much how we did it. But um, for them, it was like, no, they just straight up asked, yo, question two. Yes. And <laughs> like, no, <laughs> man, I can't help you. But these small lies, I like, got bigger and bigger. And then one of the lies um, I told my, <laughs> oh my God. So I had this uh, huge crush on this girl in school when I was mm. like 12, 13, mm. 14, whatever. And I would ask my dad for like allowance every week. I'd get it like maybe every three weeks, <coughs> sometimes every two weeks. So one time I like save up because I was trying to get her like a gift. But um, I kept asking my dad, like, hey, I got to go eat with my friends. You know, can you give me money so I can eat with my friends? <laughs> and he gave me, <laughs> I said, we're going to a really expensive restaurant. Please don't like, uh, don't let me be, feel embarrassed. And That's he was like, crazy. OK, so he gave me some money and I went out to eat and I bought these like stuff. I don't know what it was. And that. I like gifted her to her in school and I came home. Or I bought the gift and I left it. I left it in my room or whatever. And I and I went downstairs and this is how I got caught. <laughs> I was downstairs in the kitchen eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I was, bro. I was starving. <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing because he just came there. He's like, "I gave you three hundred real. What were what, what, what you doing eating?" I was like, <laughs> "That's the best food for the like, homeless guy yeah, in the corner." I just made, it, bro. I. I was, that's why I'm telling you this because I got pff, exposed, right? Uh, I don't know if I told another lie until I lost. I don't know what I said. But, bro, that was the dumbest thing I could have done was to ask money to go eat and then come home and eat. <laughs> <laughs> the wildest lie I ever told. And then, um, but that was like the boldest lie I've ever told my parents. Mm. Uh, the other times, like, I would, like, you know, sneak out, like, ask one parent, hey, can I go sleep over at my friend's house? And mm -hmm. then he would say no, or my mom would <coughs> say no. So I'd ask my other parent, and then they would say yes, and then I'll just take whatever answer I want I wanted, right? And that wasn't really a lie, but it was like very manipulative. Yeah. Um, but that was like one of the biggest, like boldest lies I've ever told. I don't know. I can't I recall. 
I, I, I can't think of any specific lie that stands out to me. I think to me, it was actually the opposite. You know how they say it's like, like the Prophet said, like the, the best of deeds are the small ones, but done consistently. I was like, bro, I didn't need no big lie to break the camel's back. I had way too many small, <laughs> small lies. lies. Like it, it, it really, to a certain extent, like it, I knew I was in the wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you mentioned the aspect of like, you know, going seek istighfar and stuff. But then there was a point where it like broke the camel's back and then I just stopped. I would, I would literally, at a certain point, I was like, I'd rather fail this exam or I'd rather get a bad grade uh, than to lie about something. Like, in, especially in college. In college, mm-hmm. it was so much, I feel like it was actually so much easier than it was even in high school to get away with things. Yeah. Because you could just say, yo, you used to say something like crazy. Like, yeah, my parents are in the hospital or something like that. The professor's just going to feel bad for you. Like, they're genuinely good people. Who there? There's no reason for them not to trust you, and so then when you're put in that position, I felt like, yo, I'm I'm a horrible human being. Taking advantage. Yeah, well, lie like they'll never know that you lied to them straight in their face. They'll never know they took advantage of them, but you do. Allah mm-hmm. does. And then at a certain point, that's where I just made a promise to myself. I was like, I don't care what the consequence is. I'm done. I'm mm-hmm. done because it's it's hurting me more than it's hurting anyone else. So I was like, all right, cool. My bad. You know, I took it out of like a... No, you're good, man. I, I just... <coughs> I, I wish I thought like that. I, I didn't. I did not feel any guilt. I was like, yo, I need to pass this test or I'm going to be homeless. <laughs> so I hope God understands. <laughs> I need an A. <laughs> I would say whatever, do whatever to get past this guy. It did not matter, bro. I had no thought in my... There was no guilt. <laughs> Absolutely zero guilt, bro. Like I was just left. If I could find the scantron on the floor, <laughs> it was alhamdulillah, bro. Yeah. I would come out of an exam that I cheated after getting an A and say alhamdulillah. It was so, <laughs> <laughs> it was so backwards, so so backwards. But the last bold lie, it wasn't me. This is not something I did. I know this dude. <laughs> he, <laughs> dude, he would. Uh, he told his dad <laughs> that he would. <laughs> He told his dad he was going to join the debate club, (laughs) so he needed to stay after school, right? And so his mom and him, like, after school, because his dad was working, so, like, his mom would, like, pick him up and stuff. Um, So him and his mom knew that he wasn't really in debate club. He joined Mm. the drama club. Oh, God. Because he wanted wanted to be part of this, like, musical. He was part of musical, right? And, like, he just kept it between him and his mom, whatever. And then one time his dad came to pick him up. (laughs) From quote unquote debate club, <laughs> yeah, this guy had blue face, <laughs> <laughs> and he played a. He was, I think, it was the genie from Aladdin. Oh, like whatever he played, like he was in full attire, full outfit, like he had those braces, <laughs> 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 and he was in the backseat of his dad's car with blue face. <laughs> I'd be driven home and I wasn't there, but I just, oh, I would pay so much money to be there. <laughs> but his dad pulled up on him. <laughs> but that's like the biggest, like, bonus line I've heard. But um, I, I was going to go into like the, the, the ideas of like why we lie. And <clears throat> to me, the biggest lies I told were not to my parents, it was to my friends. Like, mm. it was lies to keep up appearances, mm. right? So some of the lies I would tell, like, um, like to fit in. Everybody was into football. Well, it's called soccer here, but like whatever, football clubs, right? And I remember <laughs> all my friends like um, watched the Premier League. And so I just watched it too. Mm. I didn't have the channels at home. You know, I would go crazy trying to find like some some online link to watch these games that I did not care about. <laughs> I just needed to keep up with it enough to fit in. Mm. And I remember, uh, I remember um, I bought, it was Arsenal. That was a team that I supported. I supported. I, I bought all the jerseys. I, I, all all these paws, paws. I had all these random men on my back. I didn't know who was who. I just took the star player f- and every every two, three years and got a new shirt. And I would watch these games I could not care less about. Mm. But I would have to pretend. And the annoying thing about this was that I have to pretend to be upset every time they lose. Mm. And it was Arsenal. These guys lost every week. <laughs> So if I wanted to fit in, I would have to fake being upset for like four days. Yeah. Oh man, you know, oh, you see that guy, that one guy that lost that, missed that penalty. Oh, I was completely happy inside. 
but I had to, I had to, I, you know how much money I spent on tickets, on, on, um, on, on, what's it called, on all these, like, um, uh, events that we went to, like, we had, like, a bunch of people come together, and we all had, like, potlucks mm. and stuff, I could not care less, and I was so happy mm. when I was, uh, I, I was able to age out of that, and just be honest, and tell, tell myself, I don't care, I don't care if they win or lose, I'm not even watching, yeah. I literally don't know, and it didn't happen until, until I changed friend groups, and the next friend group didn't really care about soccer, and I was like, mm. alhamdulillah, till this day, I have the jerseys and everything, I just, it's such a waste of time for me. Peer pressure, bro. Yeah. I really wanted to play like Uno and stuff. Like that was like that was my stuff. You and know what I'm saying? You guys had that back then? Yeah, Uno, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, what the hell? Of course we had Uno. But in English? Like, that was huh? In English? Or was it spelled in Arabic like Uno? Uno. No, Uno. It's not why I don't know what you <laughs> just Uno. It's like it was same I mean, played the same way, whatever. But dude, I had no there was stuff like I did not care about. Like there was people, you know, into working out. And I had to pretend I got injured every other week. Mm. Oh man, my shoulder man, I was doing some some push ups in the in the garage. I've never done a full push up in my life. Yeah. In, in the, at that, at that, until that point. I believe it. Yeah. Well, I like damn. What's up? You said I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so but I'd lie about all these other things. Um I, I know the most popular lie that everyone told in school was like, you know, I have a girlfriend, but she just goes to another school. So I don't know why people were obsessed with that. I'm confused. You don't want to look like you're single. When all your, all you're your a Muslim are. in a Muslim country, in a, in a, Muslim, a Muslim school. It, yeah, but I'm, most of <laughs> most of these kids were not Muslim. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We went to like a private school. Oh. But it wasn't. It wasn't like we weren't keeping up with like appearances for that. We were just keeping up appearances. Like everyone was just trying to beat the next person. Yeah. And even even the Muslims that were part of this group did, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were probably trying to fit we in. We weren't with in that competition too. of who prays the most. <laughs> that wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> wasn't that, that wasn't what. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what was at stake, you know. What I'm saying it was like the reputation yeah, of like, oh, like who's the cool, who's the fastest, who's you know who plays soccer the best. But did they exist? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to know, like that group of people who actually did compete when it came to like Islamic stuff, because I feel like they exist. There are those cliques there. Like, were they were they there? You just chose not to be around that group. I'm curious. I wouldn't say we competed. I would say there are people who prayed. There are people who fasted. There are people that, but I don't. I don't think there. Was but there wasn't like this religious clique. That kind of everyone looked at as religious, like, yo, they're coming, like, hey, let's not, no? No, not a religious clique. Okay. I would say that we <coughs> had people who were just known to not get into, you mm. know, nonsense, mm. but we wouldn't say, quote unquote, religious, because even they would, like, come in with, like, crazy jokes okay. and, like, mad stories, but they wouldn't do anything. They, they're yeah, just like yeah. me. They're all mouth. Like, they yeah. just talk, but you don't mean nothing by it. You're mm-hmm. just choking. Mm. But no, we didn't have just these, you mm. mean, like, a Salafi group or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, like we didn't have like none of that. We didn't have any like yo, like um uh you know, we tailored our uniform to show our ankles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't <laughs> we didn't have none of that. We just you know, we just you know, there was a prayer there was a prayer space and there was only three guys there <laughs> and I could guess what three it was. You know what I'm saying? Like that was <laughs> that was the environment. Uh, that was okay. that was about it. Uh, so I was saying the biggest thing that I would lie about um, to my friends were like anything in the world of like aspect of money mm. so for us like one of the currencies was like where did you go this summer like between y- between mm. school break right <laughs> so I, <laughs> a lot of my friends would go places and I would I would be home I did go out some years I went to like usually I go to like uh, London because that's where my mom's family was mm. so I'd go to back and forth between Qatar and London but some months I didn't go nowhere mm. but I didn't have the heart to tell my friends I didn't go nowhere Mm-hmm. So I would make up some place I had never been to, and then I would just turn my phone off. Not even phone. I'll turn my. I would never log into. Uh, what do you call them? You know those like live chats that you used to talk AOL. to your friends. Aol. Aol. There was another one. Aim. Aim. I one of those, AIM. right? MSN. I used to use MSN. Okay. Right. So I d- I just like I'll put it <laughs> offline and I would have to stay away from it for like the whole summer to make it believable. Because if they saw me log in, they'll be like, mm. "Yo, what you doing?" I would do that, and then I would. <coughs> I wouldn't, um, I'll just be at home and I'll start posting photos from Google. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll just post, just post Google photos. Are you lying right now? Are you still in that habit of lying? No. Because I don't believe you. Posting random photos? Yeah. 100% I'll post random photos. What? Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be crazy enough to be like, oh, this, uh, you know, the wall of China. Because like, 
I, right, I, obviously. I can't yeah, convince yeah, you I yeah, went yeah. to China yeah. if all I have is a photo of some bricks. You know, I need, there's, there's more to that. So I'll just tell you I went to London that yeah. year and I'll post you like old photos yeah, yeah, of when yeah. I went to London. Uh, or if my friend, my cousin went to, you know, some part in Europe that was close to London, like mm. maybe he went to, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What else is in Europe? Don't Czech ask me. Republic. I don't know. Hell no. Is that in Europe? I don't know. I'm dumb as so hell. I don't know. <laughs> We're not good in somewhere geography. else in Europe. He went to Greece. Okay. Brother went to Greece or whatever. I okay. don't know. I don't know where this is, right? I said, like, brother, slide me that photo. Crazy. Yeah, there's there's enough surmise in this photo. Somebody going to think I'm in there. <laughs> you know, there's 16 of y'all. Yeah. It's all my cousins. Yeah. I'm not in it, but. I never, I, I don't know. I never experienced that, bro. I never. Being a liar? Oh, no, no, no. It's hectic, bro. <laughs> it's <laughs> this so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much, much pressure, work. Bro. Dude, there's so it's much too work. Too much bro. work. You know I don't know if it, it's like a. Bro, my summers were fire so long as I had rollerblades and uh, a water gun and some Fam, ice bro. popsicles. My, my one was heat, bro. Like, if I stepped out the house because my mom asked me to come with her, I'll be sweating buckets because someone goes see gonna me. Catch you. Someone going to catch me at, 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 the, at the store, Yo. you know, and I'm like, Mom, I got to go home. I got to rep, you know, like, I got to. Hmm. Maybe, you know, think. maybe there was the pressure because you were in Qatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, in the States, it's yeah. normal not it's, to go. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not flying to Europe every oh, summer. Or I'm not going. 100%. Yeah, I would I wouldn't <coughs> have been worried. So like my <coughs> issue is like in the circle I'm with. Yeah, if I, I just don't want to be like the, the the bottom of the totem pole. Mm. So I lied about a lot, of, bro. One of the things about being a man was like how soon your voice like got deep. Mm. So I would rem I remember every summer without <laughs> fail, I would answer the f the first phone call I answered. Oh my I would God. like rehearse. It's good before my one of my friends called and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said like, hello. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, so much been cool, man. You try to hang out later? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. And I remember one time one of my friends like, damn, bro, your voice got deep. I'm like, you know, man, that happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I hung up and I saw him the next day. What's up, man? <laughs> and we would just both look at each other. We knew <laughs> when we just let it. <laughs> but it was like little stuff that I would just completely lie about. And then also, like, um, even during the school year, like when it came to, like, uh, like let's say, oh, they invite me to go, <laughs> invite me to go out to eat. Like, I would be like, yeah, man, uh, I'll go out to eat. But I wouldn't eat. I would just, like, have the bread that's on the table because I didn't have a lot of money. Mm. And then my dad, like, he gave me money. But if I, sp like, he won't give me money twice in one weekend. Like, so if I went out Friday, then I can't go out Saturday because those are our weekends. Cause if, I, if I went out Friday and I spent all the money then I didn't, and, I, and I chose to go out Saturday. Done. Yeah, you, you have to go out with no money because I'm right. not giving you money again, right? It's one of those. It's one of those days. So I went out to eat because I just didn't want to be left out. Everyone's out to eat, and I'll just eat like whatever's on the stuff on the table, mm -hmm. you know. And um, everyone will be like, uh, the, the 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 person will come by and be like, hey, you, you. Actually, it's always a Filipino, right? Mm -hmm. And they, for whatever I understand, they're in their vocabulary. They don't have a him and her like a mm -hmm. masculine feminine word. So they used to always call us ma'am sir. Mm -hmm. Used to call us both. Excuse me, ma'am sir. <laughs> like just both. So it's They're like, so me. respectful, yeah, bro. Yeah, so respectful. Even in the States here, by the way. Oh, yeah? They they use the sir. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, no, they're super nice. So she's like, excuse me, ma'am, sir, do you want some more bread? And everyone was like, no. I was like, yeah, bring it. <laughs> Keep it coming. So I'll just have, like, the bread, and I'm, like, talking to people. I'm like, and then when the when everyone's ready to order, uh, they're like, yes, I'm, with you. I'm not hungry, man. You know, yeah. I just, but I just, like, killed two baskets. Um, And so I would, I would do little stuff like that. I would pre-eat. You know how people, <laughs> you know how people go out to like drink, yeah. like pre-drink, so they don't have to drink liquor mm. at the bar where it's more expensive. That's why I'd, I'd eat at home, and That's then I'd crazy. come out to the restaurant, so I won't be as hungry. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are like dumb things that I would do. And then one time I remember, I even like, um, I even started fake beef because <coughs> the guy kept inviting me out, and I had no money, so I just, <laughs> I just stopped beefing with him. I'm like, Yo, man, I heard you. Just, Heard you was talking smack, bro. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like having fake friends around me and you know <laughs> stuff like that. He's like, bro, I, like, what do you mean by that? I was like, you remember that time? And I'll bring up like a real incident, but he obviously I knew it was a joke that he meant to buy, but I would like pretend to be upset about it yeah. so that I could like start this beef yeah. so I don't have to go hang out with him. You're a sociopath. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, te <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, the pressure <laughs> of lying is, uh, it's so. It's, it's the pressure of fitting in, bro. Fitting in, yeah, yeah. Which I think is wild. Well, I don't know. Look, 
I, I want to be I want to be like fair to myself. Yeah. I think if most people were in my position, <laughs> they would have done what I did, <laughs> right? Maybe. I mean, think yeah. about it. Every single one of your friends come back and they're bragging about this, that, that, and you ain't got nothing to talk about, so you gotta make it up. For me, it would have been like, I guess I had, to a certain extent, there was a lot of Muslims in my community, so mm. it's like you had so many different options of different cliques. Like if it wasn't this clique, it was that clique. I, was it in your case like that was the only click to fit into and if it wasn't that click you're kind of by yourself like that was the only click that <coughs> I could afford to hang out with the other clicks were even richer they were mm. like the Qataris and I'm not playing with y'all like they're mm. too rich for me to hang out with okay like I could hang out with you if you choose to pay I'm happy with that right but these guys were like the quote unquote, like they call them expats because mm-hmm. you know they're white but expatriates like the immigrants like the mm. people who came there because their parents mm. worked there those are only people that I could like relate to because mm. they weren't w- like crazy rich. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, if I if I chose to hang out with the Qataris, it would have been even more embarrassing. I think, yeah, I think. But I think I would have gone away with it because they always fight over the bill. I just didn't have to fight so hard. <laughs> you know, I could. I got it. Yeah. But these friends, ain't nobody fighting over the bill. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. like separate checks. There's 18 of us. Let's sec- section it <laughs> off. <laughs> I remember being at a table where we were all arguing we just hated over you like, all. like, oh, who are the Mozzarella sticks. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. and then there'll be one guy, I ordered it for the table. <laughs> it's like, no, we didn't ask for that. <laughs> and I remember this country guy, man, his name is Khalifa, bro. Like, he's a, he's a dope friend. He walked past because uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar is really small. It was like, yeah. it's a place called Villaggio, a small mall. Uh, I guess it's a small country, so it's a, you know, if you're going to be in Villaggio, you're probably going to see someone that you know. He walked past while he saw 11, <laughs> 11 of us fighting over a bill. And he just like, I think he texted me or came by or something. He just goes, yo, how much is it? Bro? He goes like, this is embarrassing. No. <laughs> Straight up, bro. You know what's funnier? <laughs> Not only did he talk so quiet, so you had to like lean in and listen. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy was shorter than me. So I would like <laughs> lean in like, you know, like Yoda or something. Like, and then he would just say some profound stuff like, yo, I'll take care of this, man. This whatever, bro. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's like my, my, um, my life was so hectic from lying. Yeah. But Whenever like I do like these skits and everyone's like, "How do you come up with this?" I'm like, well, "How's your I imagination?" I used to do it for a living. I lie. <laughs> I'm a liar. That's how I came up with this stuff. <laughs> my my imagination has been active since I was ten. I've been trying to fit in forever. Uh, I saw something on Twitter where um um it reminded me like adults still do it now. Mm. They still try to like impress their friends mm. and strangers too, but like it's mostly their friends, right? Um, on Instagram or whatever, posting cars, posting this, that, whatever, and I realize like we're still, we're still there, at, le- at least as a society, like we're still there. But I, I, I want to say something. I feel like as I've grown up, like as I've gotten older, and this isn't everybody, but I've noticed a shift in people's tendency to start like smelling BS. Yeah, like they sense a fake person. They sense when someone is trying to make them feel good or trying to win them over or trying to like even when it comes to like interviews or talking to this person who's uh, yeah, if you if you see any of these interviews with these like wealthy or rich people mm. for that have different podcasts or different companies or the, the UFC or this, that, whatever it is, they just want real people. I think people I've in general, I feel like there was like this block of time where there was mm. just so much fakeness around mm. that everyone is a lot of people are just tired of it yeah like they appreciate real people some people still don't some people still want those suck-ups that are going to constantly tell them you're good you're amazing and mm. they never question anything and there's a lot of people like that mm-hmm. but i feel like the majority of people are just kind of like yo i want honest relationships i want people to just be real with me yeah but it's funny that there's a stat like only one percent of americans make over 400 grand a year but if you scroll Twitter, mm. everybody in their mama's a millionaire. <laughs> they're making bank per month, like a hundred thousand a month, two hundred thousand per month. Like, how are all y'all in the one percent? Yeah, none of this makes any sense. So then, when I heard that, I'm like, oh, you guys are just like me. You're lying. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, I'll give you an example, bro. The other day on Instagram, mm. and I'm not like at the end of the day, may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward this guy. <laughs> Just for the simple fact that a lot of people, a lot of people were listening to Quran because the video did go viral, mm. but it was it was built on a lie. He had a a, um, a bunch of like kids 
from uh, some part of Africa mm. reciting uh, Surat Maryam. Mm. Beautiful in harmonies. Just a bunch of kids. Mm. But the video clip that you're watching is not that. It looks like it is, but it's not. It's mm. He took audio and put it on this video. Oh. Okay. And in the in the description makes it look as if like, oh, I was walking and all of a sudden I heard this beautiful recitation and I come and I see these kids sitting around a fire pit. And the, he's telling a story. Mm. Then you realize it's completely fake. Just like, how do you figure out it was fake? Everyone, and even in the comments, you could tell. You could just tell if you're looking at the kids in the video itself, their lips are not in sync with what's oh. being said. They're just doing something else. So then you're like, even... T- you're trying to profit or lie off of like you're trying to create a fake persona on the off the dean and i'm just yeah. like bro that that's when i just started to, it's become more and more evident that there's still a lot of fakeness out there because people are just trying to make it one way or another they're yeah, just yeah, so yeah. after the dunya it's like they're justifying just like as kids we used to justify the lies because it's like like you said ya allah you know if not i'm gonna be on the streets yeah I think till now people are still justifying it because they're trying to make the bread. Yeah, but not even not even talking about bread, like the religi- religiosity of it. Like that guy could have gone without that video going viral. It's not like that's what his bread and butter is. I don't. That's what I'm saying though. He's he's on Instagram trying to make a a fake persona of like his travel life, and does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that's and that's a means of making money. Oh, I meant like okay, so people faking trying to be more pious than they are. That makes no sense to me. No, right? no, no, no. Like in you that know those sense. people who like they'll take like sandpaper and just rub their forehead <laughs> on it so they look like them. Those are the people who pay yeah, uh, all the every night. Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Like you ever see? Like I, I thought but there those is were, there's a certain level of respect that comes with religiosity. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But I'm like, dude, you walking around with that and you know it's fake. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. Like you just. That's like the 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 religious version of like a like a BBL or something. <laughs> just like <laughs> an altered body, just telling people it's real. No, it's not, bro. Uh, like and like you know, people get natural things like just from like I, I remember some people like just have like um I've been to some messages where the carpet is just like a lot more rougher than other carpets. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure people there would probably have like a little um mark on their forehead just from from brain but it's just natural like it comes across it c- just comes like that but yeah. to like sit down in your living room watching tv <laughs> and just like scratch the skin off your forehead from other people Start that's crazy knocking. so i realized um it being bullied as adults i saw that on twitter mm. being bullied as an adult sounds crazy don't try that huh don't try that what do you mean if someone tried to bully me as an adult like <laughs> what how how do you how do how you, do you t- bully an adult? How do you get bullied as an adult? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Some people are like pretty like feeble. They'll get That's bullied. That's wild. But bro. there's there's subtle ways also to bully people, right? Like mm. I've noticed people who always force one person to one particular person to drive. Like I used to be mm. in like, like a group in of their bad drivers huh? in that sense. Like let's no no, let's say everybody's going out. Okay. There would always be one individual uh. has to drive, right? And then if he asked for he or she whatever asked for gas money. They're like, what? You gonna charge your boys for gas? You gonna charge your girls for gas? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take turns then. Yeah. Right? Like these are subtle ways that people get bullied as adults. When people all go out to eat, but then they tell you you should pay, right? Like I've seen people who like mm. who, who say this, and there's just like, Miskeen. I mean, I shouldn't call you Miskeen. You're 23, brother. You should probably stand up for yourself. But you're 23, and you're just like, I'll pay for this because, you know, I want to get your respect. Or you know what? Uh, I agree with you that that happens. But I don't even consider 23 a freaking adult anymore, bro. The way wow. these kids move at 23, mm. you would, I, I would consider most of them kids. I'm just being honest. You're, you're talking like a 23 that's not been held back in school. Like he's working. Full <laughs> <laughs> like 23, I was still in school, brother. Like, yeah, know. that's what yeah. I'm saying. I think adult bro varies. Like, like Ibrahim over here, <coughs> he's more mature than a lot of 25 year olds, 26 year olds. And he's like, what, 19, 20? Hmm. Like I just think there are certain people that are gone, have gone through certain things in life that's made them mature faster than a lot of other people. And I I talk to some guys that are 23, 24, 25, and they're still talking about the aspect of like when you were in high school, like the aspect of like faking having a girl, like constantly. Oh, I smashed this girl, bro. Oh my gosh, she's a, literally. And I'm just like, wow. I don't care. And the fact that you're talking about that, and then the next sentence out of your mouth is. Bro, help me find a wife. I was like, you, what do you mean? 
Yeah, you're sitting just, here bragging about like this. This I'm like I'm nah. So nah. It, it's that's wild. Yeah, it's, but but that's what it is, you, bro. They ask you for that. They Hold ask up. you. They set them up. That's serious. And I'm like, you ain't ready. What do you mean I'm not ready? What, what does it mean to be ready? Oh, you want me to have a hundred thousand dollars? You want me to have a hundred? I was like, bro, money is not the problem, bro. Yeah. Way, if you think that's the issue, that's why you ain't ready. If you think the only thing is money, mm. that's your problem. Yeah, but also I want to say like there's there's a maturity and then there's like people who take life way too seriously. Yeah. And there's this one brother, he says, okay, I don't, I, I actually respect <laughs> this approach. He says, when it comes to Dean, I don't play. When it comes to like um, um, my family, like actual like making bread and taking mm. care of my family and like, you know, making sure they're, you know, on the right path, et cetera, I don't play. And when it comes to my job, like my career, like because he's in law, I mm. don't play. Mm. But he goes, those three things are so, they, they take up so much time mm. in my life or so much room in my life that if I was serious in anything other than those three things, I would never smile again. Mm. So I have to be silly. So he's just silly 24-7. Mm. But that's because he's so serious when it comes to his work and his mm. family and all that kind of stuff. And so like you have to. And so for me, that I kind of play that role too. Like, okay, when I'm at work, it's work time. Mm. When I'm, when I'm with, with my family, it's family time. And of course, these things kind of like uh, overlap yeah. sometimes. Like you're yeah, laughing yeah, with yeah. your family, you know. But for the most part, like I, I have to just be silly outside of all these things or else I'm going to go crazy because mm. I'm just serious 24-7. So I don't want... Uh, so I guess there's a difference between mature and then um, and an adult. Mm. You can be immature as an adult. Yeah, for sure. And still be considered an adult. Yeah, for sure. Right? Just as long as you... This is my thing. You need to be able to take care of all your stuff, and st and if and if you can, then you afford the luxury of just being mm -hmm, immature. Mm -hmm. But if you're like out here just laughing and joking and doing pranks in Walmart, mm. but you know you got like mm. rent due, like past due or something like that, then then I'm like, okay, you're not adulting properly. Like mm. there's some stuff out of whack. <clears throat> Which I wanted to talk about, like what it means to be honest with yourself, like in dunya, and then and then also like in a in a dean way, like. Being honest with myself in, in Dunya, for example, um, there are people I know who don't want to get jobs because they don't believe it's worth their time, mm. but they aren't working at all. And I used to tell myself like, okay, um, I, I, there was an internship that I was looking for and I'm like, oh, this internship only pays $10, but that one pays like 18 or 20. This is, you know, three, four years ago. So I didn't think it was worth getting the one that was only $10. It's not worth my time. And I'm judging my time based on the fact <coughs> that there are other jobs paying 18. Mm. Brother, if, you, if I ain't got a job, yeah. everything is worth my time because my time right now is worth zero. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm not doing anything with myself. Yeah. And I th I've, I've come across a couple of brothers who are just like, no, nah, man, I'm not doing that. Like, and it's because they look at Instagram. They're looking at these like 20 year old something. It's like going crazy, buying mm -hmm. rambles and all this kind of stuff. And then if you look at their Instagram, also the same brother who's asking you, like if they if if you know someone who's hiring, I'm like, where do you get all these cars to pose in front of? Yeah. And I think like you scrolled you scrolled through your timeline, like your own timeline, your old pictures that you believe you own these cars. Because every <laughs> offer I send your way, you're telling me it's not worth your time. Mm. Did you think like a, a entry job is gonna pay you hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and you're gonna be able to go from so zero? So they prefer not to do anything at all. Yeah. So then end up doing nothing. Yeah. You're sitting around. Yeah. I don't know how to help you. So I, I'm like being honest with yourself. It's like, okay, where am I in life? Anything from here is a plus. I'm going to take whatever. And if you find a better opportunity, alhamdulillah, leave the first one and go for the second. And yeah. then just progression. But yeah. to say, hey, it's either 100, 100 racks as an entry position right now or nothing. It's like crazy. Yeah. I think constantly. Um, and now that I'm like, Coming up on 30, I realized it and it's like hindsight is 2020, right? Like I wish I knew then what I know now. Mm. The aspect of just constantly trying to progress, no matter how small the progression or the steps are forward, just doing something to say that either it works out or it doesn't work out, or at least I learned something from the experience that I can take and further and do something mm. better like even like from the dunya aspect of it but even selecting spouses like the, you brought up the guy who's asking for her for wife recommendations um being honest with yourself there is like there are some people who say they're looking they're not really looking though oh yeah 
So I'm like, I, you got to be honest with yourself. Like before you're honest with me or anyone else that you're asking for, like, are you actually, mm. or, or do you just like the idea of like, I don't know, scrolling through profiles and, mm. and you just like the idea of, I call it, you know, the, the Netflix effect where you sit there and browse mm. and then what happens? You never you just add, browse. Yeah. You end up yeah. not actually watching a movie. Yeah. You spend all your time just browsing. It's crazy. Yeah. So I feel like people do that with like spouses. They're like, yeah, uh, he's that way or she's that way. Like, and don't get me wrong. There are certain things you should definitely be like hard on and say, hey, these are my requirements, whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, people would find like a perfect candidate and still want to scroll. Just keep going. So the point wasn't like, I'm just, and I'm just saying this for people, like just to be honest, like, hey, like I actually want to get married. Or I don't, and if you, it, or right for now, then just be honest. And just, just or if you are, get a good one and get the hell out of the way. Like just move. Like stop, yeah. you know, dilly dallying. Like there's way too many people out here trying to get married for you to just be playing around. Yeah. And if you're not, well then just stop asking everybody in the message. Stop coming up to <laughs> random animals and asking them, and like you know maybe he maybe he wants his daughter to get married, so you like. Or not even that. The know? questions sometimes, uh, and I, I love when people ask questions like you know. I'll never just walk away from someone asking a question, but you know those those young like kids who are just like can't wait they want to get married and they'll ask you a question, but you know the response is gonna take a good solid hour, two hours. Like they're asking you deep <laughs> questions about marriage, and you're like, bro, you're seventeen, like you're eighteen. Like what? Give me a question. Literally, uh, w- what was your experience when it comes like a very open ended question, uh, right? Terrible. It's just open ended, and then. By by saying one thing, oh, what about this? What because if it's an open ended question, you feel like you got to take them from step one to step ten. Like mm. this is what this is this, this was my experience about getting married, right? Because you got married at seventeen or eighteen. 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 Yeah. And so anyone who's around that age now is asking you. You see what I'm saying? You have to walk them through the. I have to walk them through the whole thing. So and I don't mind, but like you said, the aspect of like chances are they're probably not going to really even follow through. With, yeah. with anything that's happening. You know what they call people like, I'm not saying this in particular, this person, but they call them ask holes. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that's good. That's great. That's right? a good one. <laughs> They're just people who just ask questions <laughs> and, and you ain't going to do nothing with this information. And man. that's a great thing because I actually started to consciously, well, lie, I've, I've started to consciously ask myself, if am I doing that? I didn't know the term before, mm. but I started to make sure that I'm not asking questions just to ask. Before, mm. I used to ask sometimes just out of curiosity, but yeah. not taking into account how much pressure that might be putting on someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, put your curiosity to the side. Mm. Do you really need to know this right now or not? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Or are you just bothering the guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's... <laughs> no, 100%. You gotta I used to be, it. I used to just be happy hanging out with like, the shoe, yeah. especially after talks oh and stuff. Oh my gosh, this is the best hanging out with the Meshach. Yeah, I just bro. love hanging out with them. So I just ask them Amazing. questions that I have zero... Like I used to ask a lot like, of questions. Like, huh? I used to ask a lot of questions too, but yeah. they were deep questions. I think there was those were good. They were yeah, good. Yeah, no, questions. I I used to ask questions that I actually needed answers to, yeah. and then just because I felt like I had them in my vicinity, mm. I would just like almost. I felt like I was bullying them. Like I was asking questions I had zero, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, I I don't want to bring up anything mad controversial, but like I'll just be asking stuff that I absolutely have zero like. Uh, chances of doing right now like mm-hmm. hey what should i put on my will like i'm i have nothing <laughs> I, I have nothing but the car outside like what am i <laughs> why am i asking him this and he's sitting down saying give a third to your daughter and i'm like <laughs> i'm like i ain't got no kids and i got one <laughs> kid like what, like why am i asking him this question yeah. but i just used to love being in that world of uh it's almost like google but like you can't get this answered off google you know yeah. Now, <coughs> the aspect of like the the dunya thing, right? Going back to that, because you were talking about like being honest with yourself. I believe my extreme was as growing up, I could I couldn't care less. Thank you, Ashik. I couldn't care less about um, <coughs> the dunya. About the what? Sorry. About the dunya. I couldn't care less about the dunya. Like it was an extreme to the extent where it was like. I didn't want to work. I couldn't care. I, I couldn't care less about working. It was, I, I couldn't care less about money. Um, it was, but that was an extreme. I wasn't being honest with the fact that money is necessary to live in this world. Oh, you were opposite on me. It, yeah, complete opposite. And that's mm-hmm. why I love, I was like, I was excited for this, like, you know, the, this conversation because I, I already know, again, you're going to get two opposite perspectives. Mm-hmm. For me, I genuinely did not care about money and uh it was really bad oh, masjid 24 7 just being in the masjid is like as if that's gonna be you know did i work i worked but it wasn't the sense of urgency to say i need to provide for my family 
Mm. It was like, no, I'm going to put the deen before my dunya. But I, I was coming at it from a, a, a wrong perspective. Of course, deen always before your dunya. But I was lying to myself about how to properly go about that, how to properly mm. implement that within your life. For Dean to yeah. be above your dunya. I remember when you graduated from Berkeley, and then there was a brother, uh, I won't say his name, but he um, he saw you working at the masjid. And I think you, I don't know if you were working at, at the yeah. masjid or you were volunteering on one of the two, but yeah. basically taking a pay cut from what you could have been making elsewhere. Yeah. And he told you he was, <laughs> and I was there. He was like, "Hey, why don't you go get a high paying job and then quit and come back here just to say you did it." Yeah. Versus I just that. just working here because then you that. look like somebody who couldn't have done it. Yeah. So he wants you to have like the reputation of yeah. like, hey, I chose to be here as yeah. opposed to I ended up here, which is actually it's a valid point. It's a valid point. Valid point to who though? Like it's valid point to other people. No, you know, I think that person was being nice. Oh, for sure. I don't think I don't really think he meant it in the sense of and then come back just to say you did it. I think that was just a nice way of saying. But because if I if I did go that route, I wouldn't come back. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he was trying to present it in a way where it's like I'm not getting offended, or or he knows what that version of me wanted, which is come back to the message. So he's still trying to keep it in there. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? He's not trying to tell you to completely let go of this. He's yeah. like, hey, go try it out and come yeah. back, knowing that if you try it out, you probably stay there. Yes. And that'll be better for you. Yes. Right. And then obviously you can you know help out in the message as a volunteer. Exactly. Right. He uh, did the same thing to me when I told him about me being a civil engineer. You need to tell me who this person is after the podcast because I, d- I, I, I know the conversation. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. it, but I don't remember it who it was. It starts with an O, and you'll know 100%. But we talk okay. about it afterwards. Yeah. He also was the same person who told me about me because when I graduated as an engineer in civil, he goes, um, you got to ask yourself, because I was, I was flying back to see my family in Doha. He's like, when you get on the plane, just think about it. Do you really want to be a civil engineer? And I got upset at the question because I'm like, I just graduated. Yeah. Like I spent all these times in books, uh, and you're telling me I have to ask myself because mm. I don't want to ask myself because I'm scared of the answer. Mm. If the answer is no, I don't want to be a civil engineer, then I have to like, you know, sit with the fact that I hate what I'm do I'm mm. gonna be doing forever. But yeah, he meant that as a nice thing. He's like, I know you because we lived with each other at some point. He's like, I know you well enough to know that this might not be for you. Mm. And then comedy came out of nowhere. Mm. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's what he meant. He's just trying to tell mm. me to explore other things. But subhanAllah, like, I, I actually stopped making dua on the plane because of him. Like trying to search like, hey, yeah. what should I do? Um, but yeah, I mean, being honest with yourself uh, and making money, et cetera. And I would do that in school as well when I was studying because I wasn't one of the smartest people. And I think we spoke about this. I ended up being an engineer, but math was one of the hardest subjects mm. for me. I would have to study like two, three times more than the average person to get like the same kind of grade or like a B. And if I get an A, it was because the exam was pretty pretty easy mm. or, or I saw a, san- a Scantron. Or you lied. <laughs> <laughs> or I lied, you know, yeah, I saw a, san- a Scantron. You know, somebody passed it to me or something. But like I would, I, um, I would have to be honest with myself and say, I need to be tutored or I need to spend extra time outside. And I remember the currency of being a cool person was the person who didn't try. Mm. And... <laughs> They're the people, and then I said, double brownie points, if you didn't try but still got A's, Mm. you were the man. Mm. And I know your theory is that, like, that person probably did study. They probably did, but there's an exception. There's, like, at least maybe one or two people in the class who genuinely are just, mashallah, (laughs) mabarak, like, gifted to where they just get the concepts very quickly, and they barely have to try, and they still get A's. Yeah. I remember there was at least, I think, Jibran was one of them. Jibran Muhammad. I like to think that they were liars, too. Just yeah. like me, I just—I I yeah. mean, listen, I mean, I stroke my ego somewhere, you know. What I'm saying, <laughs> but no, but, mashallah, some people just got it like that. And I remember like those people who did lie, yeah. and they were studying at home. But I was really like about that life. Like I was like, we're not trying. And then I'd <laughs> go home and not try, and then fail like expected. And then, <laughs> and then I'd be like, hey guys, and then no one would respect <laughs> me. You I were bad like, at cheating, huh? The whole point of cheating yeah, is yeah, it, it was almost impossible in high school. I went to to cheat. Oh yeah, and then no, I started. Where I went to. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started studying. Crazy, bro. I started studying, and I was still getting like. I don't even want to open up the can of worms. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Because I will. I will. Don't expose them. Huh? Because I mean, some kids might still be doing it. No, right? I'm not gonna expose the people. 
But I just the fact that things were happening, I don't want to expose the school. Now everybody will probably like search up the school that mm-hmm. I went to. But it was crazy, bro. But was, how was it easy to cheat? What did you do? Listen, when a student is able to cop the exams before the exam. Oh, it's one of those? Yeah. And but how would they get the exams? It wasn't that difficult. It was not that difficult for them. It just, it just, it took, you know, cojones to actually try to go and get attempt it. it. Yeah, but they did it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have to be honest with myself is like in the gym. Mm. Like, um, I've been fighting with this idea that I'm not fat mm. and that I just, I was just lost it. Huh? You lost it. No, like, so I'm not talking about like, I was chubby as a kid and then mm. like I got to an adult and I was like, I was like skin and bones mm. and then I started gaining weight. But in my mind, I was like, nah, man, I'm skin and bones. I can lose this one ever. Mm. Cause I used to sleep with like, you know, uh, inflated stomach, wake up next morning, flat. Mm. It's cool. And when I played soccer, I had like a four pack. So I was like, yeah, man, I can get a six pack whenever I want. <laughs> a four pack. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I play soccer. I've never seen anyone like say it with like so much. Like, oh, yeah, I was, had a four pack. Like, as so if that's happy. something to brag about. Oh, 100% <laughs> something to brag about. What are you talking about? But anything less than, excuse me, anything less than six doesn't count? Yeah, I mean, you go ahead. Bro, four is <laughs> amazing. That's like halfway through an eight pack, brother. You crazy? That's insane. Like, so anyway, I had a four pack one time. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is like, you know, I'm like peak athleticism, you know? Like, it's all weird. It's four, like the two, yeah. the first yeah, two. Yeah, no, and just then, I know like, what four the, is. The light is shade, <laughs> of the, the second, you know, so it was a light shade. You had to, I had to like be to <laughs> to the side, and the light had to hit it perfectly for it. But um, but then I just started gaining like stomach fat, mm. kept getting bigger, and I kept telling myself, "No, I'll just be gone by tomorrow. I'll wake up, we could be flat." I again. feel like, <laughs> and it just never went down. <laughs> uh, I mean, like. Yeah. For me, like, I don't know what age I was. I think I start getting, like, <laughs> lower back pains <laughs> because I've never been so, like, imbalanced <laughs> in my life where, like, my stomach... <coughs> you ever, like, have to, like, like button up your jeans and you got to push your stomach out the way? <laughs> so the, the gym, right, me gaining weight, I used to, like, wear bigger and bigger shirts hmm. to, buy my <laughs> to buy myself time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I'm wearing, I used to rock a medium, and I was like, I was, I was, I was skin and bones. So I was like, medium was fire, and then I started wearing a large because I'm like, hey, I'm a, I'm an adult male. A large is normal, and now I wear XL. And I'm telling myself, hey man, baggies in, <laughs> you know. I bought myself Pump another cover. ten, huh? Pump cover. Yeah, exactly. I bought myself another ten pounds, fifteen pounds of time, yeah. you know, until I gained it. And now, like a XL, I can still see, <laughs> like. You know how you know the someone's stomach. uncomfortable in their in their skin, mm. like when they're wearing a shirt. Mm. I've noticed this with a lot of like my bigger friends. Mm. They do this so often. That could also mean that yeah, I do that. I do that. Yeah. <laughs> no way you do that too. Hundred percent do that. Yes, that's a sign. That's a sign that they're worried it's that it's. It's also when it's hot. Yeah, maybe. Like yeah, maybe. But I mean, like you obviously you know if a person's not fit that that's they're all hundred percent i didn't even think about that but yeah like it's just like we gotta look like you know it just felt like but the thing no what's what's to me actually what's ironic is the fact that that's not doing anything it's just a projection because it's not actually like you're just pinching your shirt and doing this the shirt is too tight to begin with that's why you feel uncomfortable in it <laughs> that's why you're pinching it and yo doing this, this three seconds right there <sighs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, just gave us a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I'm I lost, I, I ended up losing a lot of weight, but th- those are the things. Even swimming with a shirt, I never got that bad, but like they're swimming with a shirt. like I used to swim with a shirt. Huh? I used to swim yeah, with but a But not because you're fat. You were just probably, you know. Yeah, I guess. You're just probably a bad swimmer, so you <laughs> want someone to identify the body. <laughs> I'm like a strong swimmer, G. Are you? Alhamdulillah. Why are you wearing a shirt in the pool? I think Aura. I think that Oh, see, I wasn't even thinking that way, bro. Like, because if I was buff... Oh, yo, I was never, <laughs> I was never buff. I was always lean and cut. <clears throat> now, now I have a little bit of a stomach mm. for sure. Yeah, still same. Like if you know, if you flex, yeah. like I'll see the six pack. Yeah, no, not four. <laughs> okay, okay, whatever. You gotta start somewhere, but you know. yeah, it. That's you know, so I've never gotten. I was, I've never been like buff, buff per se. I've always just been lean. But like you or were, now I'm like a little. This is now I'm at the worst that I've been. I think you had a beach body at some point. I don't know what the hell like what that is. Like means. something that. 
for me, a beach body is anywhere. Something if you're I not can, embarrassed if I about. I not be embarrassed with a yeah, shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I ain't even yeah. there yet. But that's such a spectrum too, because yeah. I think there's a lot of people who are just comfortable in their bodies. I think that's very important. <laughs> okay, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, we say all these things to to say like, you know, I'm trying to get better. So being honest with myself and like pointing holes in my own thinking, and maybe other people's thinking, uh, thoughts I should say. Is only so that you can see yourself for what you really are, and now you can progress. But if you avoid identifying what's wrong with you, you can't move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't believe you need to lose weight, why would you go to the gym? And not just that. <sighs> like, at a certain point, you have to accept the fact that... I needed to accept the fact that I'm not... I don't necessarily know what's best for me all, at all times. Mm. I always thought, no, 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 like, I'm unique. Uh, you know, because we all want to feel unique. We all want to feel valued. We all want to feel like we are going to be, like, we're special. Yeah, yeah. I had to accept the fact that you're not special, Imran. You're genuinely, you're not special. So by trying to somehow have, like, a, a cheat code in the matrix for your life, it's mm -hmm. not going to work out. So in the sense of, like, you know, someone would give me advice and I would just be like, yeah, but that was, maybe that worked for those last 50 people that you talked to, but I'm different. Oh, hundred, I'm still there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like, yes, take what people say with a grain of salt, but you need to be honest with yourself and reflect and say, well, why are they saying this? Mm -hmm. Well, why do they feel this, this way? And then, you know, lay it down. But if you're not honest with yourself to begin with and you're already going to shut down what people are saying, and on top of that, you you don't have a level of honesty, then you set yourself up for kind of failure. Yeah, and also if 10 people tell you the same thing, buddy, buddy, wake up, you know? But the reality is we've all been there. Like, I've been there where 10 people, 15 people, 20 people have told me the same thing, and I was just like, they don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, they're I'm, not in my shoes. Like, they, they don't understand my perspective and where I'm coming from mm. and everything I have going on in life. And mm. then you got to step, you know, it's but it's difficult. It's really difficult to accept that. You ain't special. Yeah, my and then my last point, like my work ethic, I thought was fire. Mm. My work ethic, I thought, but no, I think about work more than I actually get work <laughs> done. <laughs> and I and I I put that on. Oh yeah, I'm grinding, <laughs> right? But I, I'm really not. Like I think about work more than I do it, and That's then I hilarious. I get exhausted at the idea of work. That I'm like, yo, I'm gonna call it a day. Like, <laughs> and then when I look back at how much I did in the week, I'm like, oh wow, I did nothing. Mm. And um. And then people tell me, oh, why don't you post more? Why don't you do this more? And I'm telling you, I don't have time. And then I actually look at like what I actually did with my time. I'm like, oh, I actually did nothing. Mm. So that was like a big wake up call for me. That was part one. Join us in part two.